okay? Securing the apps that we're running on those servers. That's where most of the really interesting stuff happens today. Most of the really cute, cool attacks today are at the application layer. Because we haven't thought much about it when it comes to security, right? Because we have all this other stuff in front of it, like a firewall. We're in deep trouble, right? In this particular session, we're going to talk about the application layer. That's all we're going to talk about here. We're going to restrict the SQL Server. So how do, you, how do you use secure SQL Server? Well, you start out by installing SQL 2000 Service Pack 3. If you haven't done that, you're in probably pretty deep trouble. So you start with that. And then there is this great white paper on Microsoft.com. It's a horrible URL, but I figure you'll download this anyway. It's called SQL Security Best Practices or something like that, or SQL Server SP3 Best Practices, something to that effect. The question, though, is, would that stop the attack that we did in the How to Get Your Network Hacked session? The unfortunate answer is, if you follow the directions in that white paper, no, it would not stop the attack. So what are the tweaks? Well, these are the things we're going to talk about. I'm not going to go through all of them, but this is kind of the agenda for the session. And I mentioned that they are unsupported because they are. These have not been broadly tested by the product group. They have been tested. We kind of know a little bit about what breaks on them. But if you do this, and then you call PSS for support, they will give you what's called best effort support, which basically means they will help you undo what you just did, which may include helping you reinstall, right? Flatten and rebuild. This may be a nuke and pave scenario. Think about that before you do it. I just want to get that warning out there. I I'm, not, I'm not trying to stop you from doing it. I'm just trying to make sure that you understand what it is we're trying to do here. We are trying to build a highly secure SQL Server. In order to do that, we've got to make it sort of unsupported. So here's my SQL Server. <clears throat> you go in here, find your machine, hit Properties, hit Security, and you change the account right here. Are you tingling already? We're on shaky ground here. Basically make it totally useless. Actually, I'm a little surprised at this because this ought to actually work. We got SQL Server to run as a guest. We managed to stop most of the attack. Some of it is still working. XP Command Shell still works and so on. What is going to break when you do this? Well, replication, if you use that, will probably break pretty hard, right? Because to do replication, you need to be able to launch all kinds of weird system services and commands and connect out to sockets and all kinds of weird stuff. Clustering, there's a real good chance that'll break too. It really needs to run as local system if you're going to do cluster services. That's going to be a hard, hard sell. Uh, the SQL agent, you kind of want that to break, right? SQL server shouldn't really be a command scheduler, right? I mean, there are some cool things you could do if you do allow it to be that, but I kind of don't want to. Um, XP command shell, as you saw, some of the things that we did with it were broken because we're running as a very low privileged user. Other things will probably work. The SA account at this point is pretty useless. By default, the SA account is a system administrator on the OS, basically. At this point, it's pretty useless, which is kind of what we want. And there may be other things as well that'll break here. We don't, we don't really know. You need to test this in your environment before you turn this on on the production servers, right? These are the things we know you're going to have trouble with. Public has execute permission on over 1,000 objects by default in SQL Server. Okay, you probably don't want that. You probably want to restrict that. Okay. How do you do that? What's going to break if you do that? Well, let's see. Replication probably. It depends on what you do. Fairly obvious that all the scripts and tools and so on will break once you start setting permissions. Okay. I don't know. It depends on what you do, right? Which ones do you revoke? All public access just broke. We, we know that, that you much. might want to do instead that are a little bit easier to deal with. Things like get rid of these things, right? XP command shell. Do you want your SQL server to be a remote command line processor? I'm, I'm seeing people now go, no, 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 I don't want that. OK, fine. Drop it. Why not? Drop right? procedure XP underscore CMD shell and Run it. Let's refresh. Go big refresh. Notice now XP command shell is gone. Okay. 
Obviously, an attacker that knows this could now run SP underscore add extended proc and add it back in. Right? In SDSA, you have the right to do that. So what you really need to do is you need to drop it, and then you need to get rid of the DLL that XP command shell is in, which happens to be XP log 70.dll. The problem is there's a bunch of other stored procedures in there, uh, things like XP enum groups, XP log event, and so on. So we'll go ahead and, and get rid of those as well. We'll go ahead and, and look at what breaks while this thing is restarting. Drop these things. What are you going to break? A lot. You're definitely going to break replication. XP command shell is needed for replication. You will break a ton of SQL tools and scripts. You will probably break service pack installation depending on how you do it. If you do a service pack installation as an operating system admin, it'll be fine. If you do it as a SQL admin, it won't work. Okay? It won't, that won't work. Uh, will be a problem, right? Uh, other things depending on what you get rid of. If you remove XP log 7.0, you will also break SQL Diag, SQL DMO, SQL Trace, the index tuning wizard, as, and so on, right? So a lot of things will break depending on what you do. We've now pretty much taken this box, and it's, it's more or less what I call a flying gas can at this point, a flying gas can at this point, a flying gas can at this point.